Here is the package that is just arrived from England. We believe that it's the power steering kit for our beloved 1984 VW Westphalia buttermilk. So we're going to open her up and see what we've got here. So the grand opening is thoughtfully stapled many times, beautifully packaged. Managed to make it all the way from England to Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And not only is it stapled, it is sealed for our protection, I'm sure, here. Beautifully packaged, look at that. Plenty of Dalmatian foam here holding everything. Looks like everything has made the trip. Let's see, here is the Easy Steer Power Control Package. This looks like the swivel joint for the steering. A wiring package. Oh boy. Here's the heavy part. Steering shaft. Oh, look how beautiful. And the electric motor. Lovely heavy wiring. This is the Mark II Mania Easy Steer. MK2 Mania. Like the whole set. And of course, if you were expecting to find a manual, you may be disappointed. But as we've seen, there are videos online, and we're going to hope to make another one that may help people in this country to equip their T3s, BW Westphalia, Vanagon, mid 80s style. No power steering. Suddenly it's going to have power steering. First we're going to remove the plastic shroud from around the steering post. Just two little Phillips screws, one on either side. Nothing holding it on except a big old clip. Next we're going to take off the steering wheel. First we'll remove the horn button. There it is. Now the steering wheel should come right off after we remove the 24 millimeter nut in the middle. Nuts off. Steering wheel off also. Next the upper shroud will come off of the steering post. Nothing holding it on. Okay, before we do any work on the electrical system, we're going to go into the battery and disconnect the ground strap 
to make sure that all the circuits are dead when we're messing around with the wiring. Now we can gently remove the uh, connectors to the wands and proceed. First we remove the Allen bolt that's holding this in. And now the entire assembly of the turn signals and the wiper wands will slide right off. Top of the steering columns held on by something called break-off nuts which don't have hex heads for a wrench they've been that has been broken off and so now we need to come up with another technique to get them out of there the next piece is held on by some break-off bolts and my favorite way to get these off is by clamping with a vice grip as tight as you can get it and now we can loosen those nuts be very careful with this because if it slips you can pinch your fingers really badly. Next to the 13 millimeter we're going to get these last couple of bolts that are holding the steering shaft to the firewall. And just one more 13 millimeter bolt holding the two parts of the steering column together and we'll have this old manual non-power steering steering column out of there. So after we release the 13 millimeter bolt that takes this top clamp, get that loose and the top part of the steering column will come right out and that only uh, leaves us the lower portion. Now if you pull up the rubber boot now if you pull up the rubber boot and what's left down there see there's one more clamp I've already loosened it one last clamp you release that with a 13 millimeter and lo and behold the remaining piece of the steering column will come right out. You'll notice that it has a brown wire coming up through the middle of it. Don't cut that off. We're going to want to use it. We're going to want to take the new U-joint poke it through the rubber boot. Don't, you don't want to neglect the rubber boot. And you should notice that on the splined end there is an indentation. That indentation has to go where the bolt in the clamp goes through it. Otherwise you'll have a very hard time. So now we've got the uh, Got the U-joint going through the rubber. Rubber goes this way with the small end up, looks like. But here's the important piece. We're ready to reassemble, but don't put the bolt through the clamp yet because that bolt is going to have to run alongside this little indentation that you can probably see here. And so get ready to put it, but don't, don't slip it into the clamp yet then run the brown wire, the ground wire, up through this U-joint, out the top. Alright, we're ready to reassemble now. So notice where the depression on the splined end of the U-joint is. We've got the wire run out through the U-joint, but we're going to have to make sure that we've got that depression parallel to where the bolt is going to go. Otherwise, things won't go together properly. And into the hole it goes. Don't push it down too far. It's got to be just far enough so that you see that the depression in the right place 
and you can get the bolt through the clamp landing right in the depression hopefully and now we can bolt it back together now we've got the clamp assembled but do not tighten that clamp yet you're going to need a little bit of flexibility to try and get everything lined up and we'll come back and we'll tighten that later under the rubber hood probably your new steering mechanism and the electric motor did not come assembled and so you have to put those two together here before we go any further make sure we haven't got any grit or cat hair down inside and now we can put the motor the motor on with the wiring pointed down toward the floor. Here's the steering wheel is going to be up here, floor is down there, wiring from the motor goes down. Ten millimeter bolts, and snug them right up and be ready to install. Now we're ready to start assembling the new column against the new U-joint. First, in the U-joint, you've got to take out the bolt. Take it out completely. Don't just loosen it. And you'll be able to assemble the new steering column into the U-joint. And you'll see why... Uh, You can see why, because of this depression on the spline for the new shaft, that's why we had to remove the bolt, because it's going to slide right in along that. So now that its bolt is out of the way, let's see if we can assemble this into the U-joint. Okay, we're in, and now we can slide the bolt in, hold everything together, don't tighten it up too much. Let's see how this lines up with the holes. Now we're going to have to do a little surgery, it looks like, on the panel here to get the motor to fit, but that's only plastic. Now the only other thing that I've got to do, I've got to get to the hardware store and buy some bolts to replace the breakaway bolts. I could put these back in, but I mean, I, if I ever need to get them out, I'll be really mad at myself. So we'll go and buy some replacement bolts to hold this in and then come back and see what we need to do to the heater outlet in order to make everything fit. In order to make the electric motor fit, we had to do some Dremel work to trim off the end of the air handler here so that there's another inch or so for the motor to stick over. Okay, now we've put the wands back on and the steering wheel is back on and the only tricky part is the plastic little housings the top one appears to fit the bottom one's going to need a little surgery to fit around the new bumpy parts but other than that i think we're pretty much done with the physical parts now the next part of course will be the electric so, interesting problem, the wire for the motor, heavy wire, that was supplied with this kit is long enough to go from a right-hand drive steering wheel back to the battery. But in a left-hand drive car, it's about a foot short. So, I went to the local marine store that's got some nice flexible 12-volt wire, 
and bought 10 feet of, I figured I might as well go big, some 10 feet of number eight. And then how to get it to the battery. You can see we've drilled a hole in the battery box, insulated it with a piece of rubber tubing, and now I'll be able to hide it underneath the carpet. I went over underneath the edge of the carpet, along behind the uh, emergency brake, and underneath the uh, carpet, right alongside the uh, shift lever, and up behind, all the way over to where the 12 volt motor is going to connect. And here's the finished view of the new nice heavy red wire that runs directly from the battery. You can see we've tied it on to, along with a couple of other wires, tied it right on to the connector to the positive terminal of the battery. Goes straight out through that hole and all the way up to the front of the bus. And now we have the uh, control box here, the, the, the central processor, I suppose, mounted right up against the steering post. There's a couple of 8mm uh, eight mil, eight mil screws holding it, 8mm bolts. Here is our new 12 volt wire coming from the battery. Now I need to find I need to find a place to mount the 100K pot that will be the control pot. And it looks like there's just enough room behind here. So a 3 8 inch hole right there, just outside of where the cowling will come, I think will go just fine. And now we've got the control pot mounted behind the dashboard. Here's the wires coming down that will need to get connected and soldered and shrink wrapped to the wires coming from the control box. Okay, now we are pretty much all buttoned up and wired up. Uh, you can see here the white ground wire from the little control box has been grounded here. The control box is stuck up against the firewall with a velcro so I could get it away if I needed to. This is the fuse that powers the control box and that this this power should come from something when the key is turned on and in an older Volkswagen like this we don't have that there's no accessory socket so what I did was I added a little relay just a standard little relay um, that would take 12 volts and look at the signal when the key is in the in the lock. The key is in the lock, there's a buzzer that goes off and I've hooked this relay to the same buzzer. So as long as the key is in the ignition, the relay will pull and this will give 12 volts. Um, the big hefty uh, the big hefty socket for the giant fuse for the motor is velcroed back here up against the firewall as well. Now the control box of this kit requires ignition switched 12 volts and so we create that by tapping into the gray black wire that comes from the ignition switch bringing that down on a new wire down to the relay and when that goes through the relay the relay turns on and switches 12 volts tacked onto the big new red wire that we ran from the battery out to the control box. So there you can see the uh, big 40 amp fuse receptacle, the fuse is not in it at the moment, uh, up against the firewall vertically right in there. Here's the little control box and uh, here is the power 
which we're going to Velcro up against this. So its fuse is right near the fuse box. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now we're about ready to button up. The only thing left is to make sure that we've got the shroud fitted so that it uh, will fit those larger things that are now against the column. It takes a fair amount of Dremel work to trim away the excess to make this fit. However, you can see I had to remove some off the very bottom and the sides. Uh, just a matter of try, trim and try. The top piece actually turns out it does need to be trimmed. There's a fin in the middle of the top that needs to be completely removed in order to fit properly. And here's a little list of the things that did not come from the kit that you're going to need to buy. I needed four 8mm coarse thread bolts, probably about an inch long, that will uh, replace both the snap-off uh, bolts and it will also hold the larger uh, engine control unit to the, uh, to the dashboard. You'll need all four. Then I needed a VW style relay and miscellaneous connectors, crimp on connectors. Oh man, oh, I'm too old for this. Could you help me? Okay, I got it. I got it now. Whew. All right, let's go. Woohoo!